Hello, this is I Do Damage, and welcome back to the channel. In this Blightbound video, I want to share some tips and tricks with you. I have about 15 hours spent in the game. I've crafted a legendary. I've been absolutely loving this game, and I want to share some things that I've learned with you. The video is aimed at newer players, but hopefully if you've been playing the game, maybe you'll learn something just as well. The game is not super user-friendly when you first start out, and there's some little things that I hope that you learn from this video. The timestamps will be down in the description. If you feel like I missed anything during this video, please let me know down in the comments, or please feel free to check out the links down below and hit me up there just as well. Let's go ahead and start. The very first thing I want to talk about is systems. There are systems upon systems in this game. The very first one is Blightbound. It's the name of the game. Let's talk about that system first. What Blightbound means is you can actually decide three characters to Blightbound. And all you have to do is you go into your characters. You can even see the three that are lit up in gold. Those are my Blightbound heroes. What that actually means is when I queue up for a dungeon as a random by not selecting a hero, it'll pick one out of my three Blightbound. You can have one of each class, healer, tank, DPS selected. It'll pick one out of that pool. So the way that you pick to Blightbound a, a hero is you just go into the hero that you want. Let's say I wanted to use Malbury's. I just come down here to the bottom right and click set Blightbound. That's now one of my Blightbound heroes and can now be queued as a Blightbound hero. So there are benefits of doing this as well is if you queue randomly with your three heroes, you can see the benefits you get right there. You cleanse some Blight that we'll talk about in a little bit. You get extra resources and plus two to all stats. Not a bad deal. I've seen this question asked a lot and it's how do I specifically queue for a character that I want to play as? First of all, this feature does not unlock until Prosperity level 9 is when you are able to queue as a single hero. All you have to do is you got to go into the hero that you want to use, and if it's lit up over here, all you then got to do is hit play. And you can pick any character that you would like using this method. You can see that once I click out of the heroes, it is now set back to no hero selected. And it'll be the Blightbound queue like we talked about. There you go. That's how you specifically queue. And that is the Blight Bound system. Now, there's more with Blight, and this next system is Blight Struck and Blight Sickness. They go a little bit hand in hand, but they are separate things and they mean different things. So let's go ahead and take a peek so you can see what I'm talking about. The very first thing is this light ring around all the heroes. All these heroes have this ring of light around them. And this one you can see has a little bit of blight there. You see how they're uh, at half? So that means she's a little bit sick, and you can see that my stats are a little bit different. Whereas if I go to someone that that is full healthy, they're losing a little bit of stats but gaining some as well. And that's all based around the blight sickness. And I will get to these stats and why they're doing that, but let's talk and finish up. The blight struck. So the way that you become blight struck, which you do not want to do because it makes it so you can't play your character, is when that white circle fully depletes and you run out of blight, or you become totally blight struck. Okay, there are a few things you can do about that. I can show you right now. There's potions you can get in the game that come in a few different flavors. The blight struck potion. So if, like I said, if I lose that whole bar of light, I become blight struck. Can't use the character, have to pick a different one to use to cycle in and earn back my Blight by playing and and uh, queuing up and getting that bonus and stuff. So it's basically just a time thing waiting for them to heal. But there's a potion you can get. It's pretty rare. I don't recommend using it. I only have two in 15 hours played. But you can actually recover from the Blight Struck using this potion. Again, they're super rare. But the other option you have is just checking in once in a while. And I see this one's at half, so I'm going to go ahead and heal it up by 20% with this Blight Potion. These actually are pretty common. You can find them on the Merchant and other places as well. You know, I've got, I've probably used about 30 so far, so they're actually really common. The other thing I should mention with Blight Sickness is on your character's tab, you'll notice those stats are in red, green, and then this white tan. So the white tan is unaffected, green, you're getting a plus two bonus. 
and then red you're getting a negative bonus. This took me a while to figure out what was actually going on and I had to get on the Discord and talk to the developers to figure it out. What it is is it's tied to your Elder and your Prosperity levels, which we will talk about next. But you'll notice in here that the less Blight Sickness you have, the more of a stat you get. This unlocks throughout your time. There's Power, I think another one's Vitality. I think there's one version for each stat. But it becomes this balancing game of, okay, you know, you don't want to have full, you don't want to be full healthy or whatever, have your Blight thing all the way full because then you're going to be losing points. But if you can get a little bit lower, you can get more of a buff. But you want it to be low, but you don't want it to go all the way that they're blight struck. So you can kind of see how it's a balancing act, and you want to make sure you're checking in there. But yeah, that's what's going on, and uh, curing blight sickness just means you need to have... You need to be more sick to increase the power. It's a really weird system, and I wish they would just add a character sheet for, you know, clarity and just explain the system a little bit better. The way it's represented is not great. Hopefully they do fix that. And speaking of a character sheet, I would love to see a detailed character sheet with my crit chance, damage, health, like just everything about my character. I would love to have that in this game. That'd be such a nice touch. That is Blight Sickness, Blight Struck, and Blight Bound for you. The next thing I want to talk about is Prosperity and how you level up and find some really cool perks in the game. So the way this works is it's your Elder. You can also see up here top left that I am level 20 with my Prosperity and my Refuge. So I've unlocked a few different perks. A few tips to get you going on the way is as soon as you hit level 6, you will be able to recruit Artisans. You'll get the option of the Blacksmith, which looks like this or the merchant. I recommend picking up the merchant. For the simple fact that you can find decent items here for a decent price. I have even found an epic on the merchant. And once you've gone through the stock and decided that there's nothing else you want on the list, make sure you do refresh your goods for the next run. When you hit that button the next time that you do a dungeon, it doesn't matter if you win or lose that dungeon run, it will still refresh the stock on the merchant. So that is a nice little trick for you there. And also there's some base items for crafting that you can pick up here as well. We can peek at the blacksmith so you can see what that looks like if you want. It is pretty in depth and I'm, I'm not gonna go crazy here. I just wanna stay focused on the tips and trick video, but you can see some of the skill trees get a little bit wild. Uh, anyway, there's quite a bit there. Oh, one other note on the merchant, you want to make sure that you are refreshing that because occasionally you can actually buy a hero from there as well. And another thing, once you've found a hero, still saving them in missions, you may think doesn't do anything, but it still actually grants you prosperity and helps you level up. So make sure you're still rescuing those survivors in your dungeon runs. The last major system in the game that I want to talk about is Notoriety. Think of Notoriety as a win streak bonus. It's indicated up here in the top right. You can see I'm at zero because I haven't done any dungeons yet in this session. But once you've beat one dungeon, you gain one Notoriety, which then you can see it gives you harder dungeons, but you get more rewarding dungeons and loot as well. You can actually up to Notoriety 4 or 5, I think you can start to find legendaries as rewards for maps. So super great, but the biggest downfall of this currently in the game, and I really hope that they fix it, is if you're playing with random players, let's say you beat a dungeon, you have one notoriety, you're ready to go on to the next difficulty, but let's say someone in your group needs to leave, and as soon as one person leaves the group, it resets the notoriety down to zero. It is super lame, and it has caused me quite a bit frustration. I even got up to where I had like four notoriety, and then someone had to leave, and it it just feels really bad. I really hope that they fix that system. But that's notoriety and how it works. The next thing I want to talk about is heroes and what they look like, what they do, and just give a little bit of a general overview there. We already talked a little bit about the stats in relation to the Blight Sickness, but let's just take a peek at what they all do. They should be straightforward, but we'll just run through the list anyway. Power makes you do more damage. Agility increases your crit damage and movement speed. Vitality increases your health and healing received. Will increases your Titan skill cooldown and also makes you more resistant to Blight. And then Luck gives you Crit Chance and Magic Find. So what is a Titan skill exactly? That's what we're going to talk about. Each hero is broken down with their skills into categories. You have your passives, your weapon abilities, your Titan skills, and also your ultimate skill. The main differences here are with the passives ultimates 
and the Titan skills. The weapon abilities are generally the same within the same class, tank, healer, DPS. So I'll just show you two different here so that you can kind of compare and see what I'm talking about. You can see that this tank has a taunting roar and his ultimate here is the Wakening Spirit and his passive. Now if I switch over to Krom, you can see that now my Titan skills on this dude increase charge. I have a different ultimate. I have a different skill. Pretty cool. I am not planning to go deep into classes right now, but that's just some general tips and a breakdown of the character sheet. The other tab we have is the equipment screen and within here you can equip your weapon, shield, and two trinkets. On your healers though, you only have one weapon slot and you have three trinket slots, so that's pretty cool. And the assassins have dual wield daggers and then two trinkets. You can craft them. There's quite a bit of variety with items here. Again, not going super in depth with that, but that is in general what the UI looks like for heroes. Each hero also has a journal page, which is more than just achievements. You also want to work through and do their stories. There are some pretty cool unlockables that you can obtain. Not going to do any spoilers, but those are your three character tabs overall. Another quick note on classes is there's nine classes total. There's three of each type, your healer, tank, and DPS class. So there, my personal favorite is this mage here, Kujik. I think he was actually discovered during a mission. He seems to be one of the more rare mages. He has a uh, gravity well, and then he can also freeze enemies. All the characters are pretty cool, but we won't break them all down in this video. One last tip here when it comes to heroes, and I mentioned it earlier is how I want the character sheet, but I think you should know that every character has a base percentage of 15% crit chance. That's for all characters. I did hear that on the developer stream on launch day, so I heard it straight from the developer's mouth that every hero has a base 15% crit chance. So hopefully that little bit of information will help you out as well. One other piece of advice that I like to give before we get into the gameplay is picking out missions, and this should be a pretty easy thing, but you can see the difficulties here, and also some of them actually give you higher rewards. You can see this one gives an uncommon item with monsters at level 8, which, you know, is a pretty decent option there. Once you get your notoriety up as well, you'll also get some extra rewards that you can see down here. But yeah, make sure you're checking these out and kind of gauging your... Kind of if if you want to do that one or if maybe there's an easier one that gives better rewards type of thing the last thing i want to talk about when it comes to tips and tricks is just general gameplay and some tips to help you out during the mission the first one is mana orbs mana orbs are the charges for your healer so they're very important so that your healer can actually heal the group the way that they're generated is by the mage simply using basic attacks the all mages have three a three combo basic attack so on its third attack in that chain, when it hits an enemy, that's when an orb is generated. That's my theory anyway, and this does seem to be correct. These orbs can be picked up by anyone, and, and they should be. You should be rushing to get them. When you pick it up, if you're not the healer, it still goes to the healer and gives them the charge. On top of that, these mana orbs also heal the entire group for a little bit. Not very much, but a little bit, which helps out. And also the person that grabs the orb also gets a little bit of ultimate charge as well. So if you're a DPS, you should definitely be rushing after those orbs to charge up that ultimate even faster to get that damage out even quicker. A few more little mechanics and tips that I just want to talk about with gameplay is if you see a giant red eyeball, maybe you've seen it in the gameplay in the background, run away from it. It's a giant red eyeball that has a white health bar over the top. Get away from it. If you're in melee range, it's going to kill you really fast. I don't know how many times that... I'm fighting a boss, one pops out right on top of me and I just don't see it, and before I know it, I'm laying on the ground. Run away from the eyeballs, kite them away from the group, wait until they disappear, and then go back in for the kill. Another fun little mechanic is interrupts. This is tied to the assassin class. The assassin also has the three basic attacks that once you've hit three times with your basic, your left click, you have three charges. You can then go up and interrupt enemies. Not any enemies can be interrupted though. In general, they are ranged characters, but they're also indicated by a red little circle next to the health bar that hopefully you can see here. If you see that, you know for a fact that enemy can be interrupted, so go do it and help your team out. One last mechanic here that I think should be talked about is during boss fights and some elites, 
everyone in your party, or sometimes it's just you, you'll get an AoE around you. It's like a blood pulsing AoE that's around your character. I've noticed people run around with it and it, it follows you. It follows you for three pulses. Once it's pulsed three times, it will then drop on the ground and start to deal damage. So what I would recommend with this mechanic is if it's on you, go to a safe place, let it pulse three times and drop it away from the group. Really simple mechanic, but I think a lot of people kind of freak out because they're not sure what it is and they just run around and drop it randomly in the arenas that we're fighting in. That was the video of the Blightbound tips and tricks. I hope that it helped someone out there. If you learned anything, I am super happy and that makes my day. You have no idea. If you feel that there's anything I left out, please do drop a comment like I said at the beginning of the video. Also, feel free to check out the links down below for all my social media links. Hit me up. Let me know what I missed. I'm sure there's things I missed. There's so many things and systems in this game to learn that it's just incredible and I'm excited to keep playing. Anyway, I hope you enjoy all the videos and content on the channel. If you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, ring that notification bell so you can get notified when I post new videos throughout the week. Feel free to share it with all your friends, all that awesome stuff. I thank you so much for your continued support, and as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.